Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I made this really awesome uh, moose napkin holder out of walnut on my Carbide Nomad uh, desktop CNC machine. So let's go ahead and get into this. So where did this all stem from? Uh, it was my mom's birthday last weekend, and she always asks for really practical gifts, and this just so happened to be the gift she asked for. It was an Amazon um, iron moose holder and I figured I've got the technology I can make this and make it a little bit more personable and um, you know she always loves when I make gifts myself so I went ahead and saved the image of the moose holder from Amazon and opened it up in Photoshop uh, then in Photoshop I went ahead and darkened the actual moose portion and then I used a um, like the magic eraser button to erase some of the big chunks that I went in there with a tiny little eraser brush and did a lot of manual removal myself and uh, once I was done with that I saved that as a PNG and opened it up in Adobe Illustrator and in Adobe Illustrator I sized it down a little bit smaller I ran an image trace of that PNG and then expanded that so that way I had an outline of all of the dark areas and I exported it as a uh, SVG or a vector file. So once I had my vector file, I hopped over to Fusion 360 and I began my design work. This is the end result. Um, I just, it was really simple. I basically extruded that SVG of the moose that I created in Adobe Illustrator and made a copy of it so that way I had uh, two for the two halves. And then I just designed a little bottom piece, which was essentially just a rectangle with kind of a, not quite a dovetail, but just a um, notches of, of um, wood, where essentially it would be wood that were sticking out. So once I had this, and I was pretty happy with it overall, I needed to figure out a way to export things as an SVG. So I found a really cool plugin for Fusion 360 called Shaper or Shaper Origin, which you can see in the top there. It's the little black thumbnail with the triangle on it, as you see me clicking on here. Well, once you install that, if you click on it and then you click on any face in Fusion 360, you can save it as an SVG, which is super useful. Um, so that way I knew that if I exported both the uh, moose sides of the napkin holder as well as the bottom, I would have the exact same size that I had in Fusion 360 and it would be uh, essentially a perfect fit, at least in, in digital plane. So I went ahead and exported both of those guys to the desktop and I was done. So now it was time to hop over to carbide create where I set my stock size which I was dealing with walnut it was about eight by six inches uh, the depth was I believe about a little over half of an inch um, I may have gotten that slightly off I, I it was late night so uh, but anyways I marked it as hardwood I put the tool zero to the bottom left corner and I went ahead and imported the um, side panel of the moose once I imported it, then I just went ahead and rotated it to have it um, in a different orientation. And I went ahead and scaled it down ever so slightly from 100% to about 95% or 1.0 to a 0.95 size just to just to give myself a little bit of extra room on the sides here. So then I copped over to toolpaths. I ended up going a little bit strange uh, method of doing this. So I used two different uh, cutters. I used, they were both carbide 3Ds, uh, like actual cutters from them directly. I used a number 111 ball nose. Um, I actually, I used a 101 ball nose that was 0.125 of an inch. Uh, and I used that to cut out the outside, the outer perimeter of the napkin holder sides and then I used a number 111 ball nose which was a 0 0.063 inch and I used that to do all of the inner details and I could have combined all of the inner details into just one toolpath instead of doing I think I did one two three four five individual toolpaths the reason I didn't was because I've been using double-sided adhesive to secure my stock material to the MDF wasteboard and I've been running into some issues with it the uh, MDF wasteboard is um, pretty used now and there's also some like dust and adhesive I've been having a really hard time to remove it probably needs to get replaced or, or faced or something like that um, but I've been having issues with the stock uh, material shifting around while milling 
So by doing it this way, after each toolpath is created, the machine actually pauses. And so I can remove whatever uh, excess wood was cut out, do a little bit of vacuuming, and also push down to re-secure the material, make sure it's still stuck in place. But as you can see here, this was a simulated toolpath. I was really happy with the, uh, the way it looked, so I went ahead and exported it. And then I went ahead and just imported the bottom portion that I had designed in Fusion 360. For this one, I just ran a single toolpath because it was a much uh, more simple design. Uh, on this one, I th think I still stuck with a uh, 111 ball nose, a 0 .063, uh, just to, I took it a little bit easier, took it slower. And on this one, I, I'm not positive, I think I also ran an outside, um, outside of the uh, vector cut, but it might have been the inside. Um, not totally positive. I went back and forth a few times on this guy. So either way, here is the end result of the uh, simulation, which again, I was happy with. So I exported and uh, then it was time to power on my machine. So I went ahead and hopped over into Carbide Motion, which is the controller software and powered on the machine. I grabbed my uh, Walnut that I uh, had purchased, which is really nice wood, and I stuck three pieces of double-sided uh, carpet tape to the back of my stock material, um, as I'd mentioned. Peeled off the backings and pressed them in place, again, very, very firmly. Um, soon here, I'm going to come up with a better solution for clamping things down, um, at least for times where I'm not cutting all the way through. Uh, I really want to come up with a uh, better clamping system, so I might make a project out of that. But either way, I powered it on and I began to ran the first job. So this was it cutting through with the thicker 101 ball nose. And um, this was a very quick job just running the outside. Um, so once I was done with that, I cleaned up all of the excess uh, sawdust or the wood scraps. And I went ahead and completely removed the outer uh, bracket of wood because I didn't want that thing moving around and causing uh, additional vibrations, which could potentially shift my piece around. So... I moved that guy around and then I swapped out the tool um, to the smaller 111 uh, ball nose, which was a 0 0.063 inch uh, diameter. Secured that into place and hopped over back into my uh, carbide motion software, just basically confirming that I had swapped out the tool. And then it was off. It was off and it was time to carve out um, the rest of the moose napkin holder. As you can see, I was very eager as I watched the whole thing, but uh, I ran all of the different five, five tool paths, and this is what I was left with. So I did my final, final vacuuming. I used a little spatula, which most of us are familiar with if you've done the, at least 3D printing to remove prints. I just use that because it's easier to get under the adhesive than trying to pry it off, especially since some of the parts on this, like it's not the thinnest of wood, but it's still decently fragile because of the legs and the horn are really the only thing holding that in place. So I removed that. I used my thumb to actually peel off the adhesive. And then I slapped on another piece of wood and I ran that second job, which again, this was just an easy... Uh, much easier job that I ran. And I did the same thing, vacuumed it off, popped off the outer part, and then used my thumb to remove the adhesive because the adhesive sticks really well. Um, if it was like a copper or aluminum part, I probably would have dropped it in some isopropyl alcohol to help with the removal, but for this wood, I didn't want to uh, do that, so I just used the grit of my thumb. So the part where the uh, sides of this intercepts with the bottom um, was a little bit too large. Uh, again, I'm, I'm still fairly new to CNC and I haven't done anything where parts need to actually fit within each other. So I took a little hand file and I just went ahead and filed away at um, at least the parts where the, the side connects to the bottom to allow it to fit in there. And uh, overall, I got it to a place where I was relatively happy with. So I applied some wood glue to the sides this project took actually a lot longer than I originally anticipated, so this was probably 11 o'clock at night, um, the day before my mom's birthday, that I was trying to get all this uh, finished. So I used my finger to really get the glue into all the crevices, and I applied uh, three clamps that I had laying around to secure them together for roughly about 45 minutes, and 
Uh, when the other side of the napkin holder finished up, I went ahead and just rinsed and repeated, applied some glue, used my fingers to smear it in, popped it onto place, and then used those three clamps once again to secure. It said it take uh, it would take about 24 hours to fully cure, but I believe you can handle it after, I think it was 30 minutes to an hour, so I probably gave it the minimum time. Um, I also noticed that the top portion of the napkin holders were slightly... Um, bowing or bending inwards due to when I clamped it the force I guess it had a slight angle so I just stuffed it with a bunch of napkins I had laying around um, so that, that way when it dried hopefully it wouldn't uh, push inwards so much and that seemed to do the trick really nicely um, so I was really really pleased with that and uh, now came the moment of truth to see whether it was all together nicely and uh, I was pleasantly surprised I really again woodworking is or doing anything with wood is new to me so um, the wood glue held up incredibly well uh, and the napkins seemed to work to keep it from bending too much inward and uh, really all that was left in my opinion was to coat it so once I removed these guys I grabbed my handy polyurethane uh, that I picked up uh, that does a really great job of just coating and uh, bringing out the natural grains of the wood and I grabbed a foam brush and just kind of went to town coating uh, coating this napkin holder um, I did I did my best I, I kind of normally I try to do lighter coats with this stuff when I've used it um, but because it was kind of hard to get into all the crevices especially around the horns of the moose and the feet uh, I ended up having to go quite heavy with the um, with the coating on this and I think I actually ended up just doing one coat. I might have done a second quick little touch-up coat, um, but mainly it was really just one good coating um, of everything, and that seemed to that seemed to do the trick. So I let this sit and dry all night long, and hoped that in the morning uh, it would be looking great and. I was really, really happy with the end result. Uh, it, it turned out absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'm very, very pleased. Uh, again, this is also new. I haven't done very much with hardwoods, and this was walnut, and the end result was absolutely amazing. My mom loved it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, hopefully this inspired you to do a cool little project yourself. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Peace, guys.